Good morning, my peeps. I hope, uh, I hope y'all had a, a good Christmas. We had a great Christmas. We had family down. It was wonderful. We chilled, and we didn't even go do anything. We just rested and had fun. So I had my f- pastor friend come down and uh, stay with us uh, uh, for a few days. So we just we had a wonderful Christmas, and I pray. I was praying for y'all that y'all did too. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Everybody say 23. Bye-bye. We are praying. I'm so excited. I'm ready for this upcoming year. Um, Christina had me up here uh, yesterday, and I was taking, like, all the massive 28 Christmas trees down and uh, organizing the ornaments and everything, and then uh, pine needles everywhere. You know how that goes. And uh, But I was praying for you, and um, the Lord just just had all of you on my heart yesterday when I was up here for a few hours, and I was just praying and I was just looking back upon this year, and I was so excited what God had done. I was so excited about each of your families, um, about just, I, I guess I was just so grateful and thankful I was overwhelmed. And, uh, and, and I know that we just have to be like that. Um, we can look back. Look, let me tell you something. I'm expecting God for a new season because I'm going to be honest with you. 23 was one of the roughest times. Y'all read my last blog on social media this week. And I'm letting you know, but that's okay, because the cool thing about it was we grow from those times, right? And then there's always miracles. Come on, give Jesus a hand. See, there's always, there's always miracles that come. It doesn't matter because God's always on the move, right? And so we can't look at circumstances. We can't look at the, we can't look back. And you know what? You know, I'm going to give you all a hint this morning. Y'all want a golden nugget already before I get started? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do, I want y'all to do something for me. I want y'all to do something for me um, as a pastor this morning. I was going over here and the Holy Ghost told me, I want you to forgive everybody that you have offenses of before you get to that church. And I was like, I, I'm, I'm good. He's like, no, you didn't understand what I told you to do, son. And so I looked back on my drive from the ranch to here slowly and I forgave everybody from that, that where I even maybe had a hint of something in my heart. And then I got so free when I got here. And I want you all to do that today. Because the new year is going to ring in. And not, not that not it's, but it is a new day. And I do believe a new season's coming. And I do believe his mercies are fresh. But I want you to look back today as a favor for me. And I want you to sincerely get with God and say, Lord, I want to forgive today. And so he'll show you what to do. Everybody say amen. Amen. Let me pray for this service. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful year. We thank you for everything you've done. We thank you, Lord, for all these wonderful people here, the ones that are traveling, Lord, um, the ones that, that, that are sick. Lord, we rebuke that sickness over every household in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we are coming today with anticipation, that we are anticipating a powerful move of God in 24. We are anticipating souls being saved. We are anticipating an escalation of miracles, Lord. We are uh, anticipating that you are going to move mightily in the hill country. But it starts with each of us. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. I am so excited. So I was going to keep this one until um, next week, but I can't help myself. The Lord put truth on my heart. And so um, now I know Teresa started... She's, uh, is everybody proud of the prayer group and what Teresa's doing? Man, we're so excited about that. And I, and I, I, I asked, I was talking to her one day and I was fixing to talk to her and she walked up to me and told the exact thing that the Holy Ghost wanted me to ask her. She said, Pastor, I believe the Lord put a truth on my heart. I said, I already got the logos done, girlfriend. So, uh, but, but it was nice confirmation. You see how the Holy Ghost works within a church. So, truth 24. Are y'all excited? So it was a rise 23, we had hope 22, and then we're going to usher in also our, we're going to usher in also our fourth year. We're starting. So I'm excited. And we all made it, right? And God's still on the move. So I want to start by, with Psalms 9-1. And this is, the, this is I'm going to give you some practical things. Does everybody like practical preaching? I mean, practical preaching. It, 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 you can apply it. I want you to, there was so many truths in the Bible, isn't there? 
but the Lord pinpointed three for me today to share with our church because He wanted you to hear these three truths. And so Psalm 9-1, I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. Is that a beautiful scripture? He's done some wonderful things. Look at this gorgeous family over here in the corner. I mean, look, look, at, look, at, look at Mandy. Look, look what Amelia's prayers were answered by God. Look, the, the kids have a mama again. I mean, let me explain something to you. The miracles have been magnificent this year. I mean, there's, there was people filled with the Holy Spirit. There was people saved. We had seven salvations in six-day period this month. I mean, I mean, it's amazing. And if we look back on 23, the Lord truly um, has done amazing things within us and within our church. And for that, this morning, I'm giving Him thanks. The Bible says to give thanks to Him continually. Even when you don't feel like giving him thanks. There's some days where you you grumpy. You know? I don't know about y'all, but you know, I know y'all are all saints. My point is, there's some days where you're looking at you're focused on the problems too much. You're not focused on and what happens when you focus on the problems, you're not grateful or thankful, and guess what? God's will cannot come out of your life. Maybe I should say that again. When you're looking and focusing on the problems all the time, you're not grateful and thankful, and you cannot find God's will that day. It's good teaching. I'm going to slow down, but I'm still going to come out. I've got to end in 23 and preach a little bit, man. And, and, and we have grown as uh, Christians. We have grown as a church and, and have seen amazing miracles. We look back and should be so grateful for all the power of Him in our lives. And I mean that. I mean, I'm so excited. And it's all about the salvations. It's all about the miracles. People getting delivered. Blessing our community. Was that amazing what Christina just shared? The local investment into our community. You see the shift? And we were still able to help train 50 pastors. So it was amazing. That's worldwide. And so we're so excited for that. But he's rising us up to the people God created you to be because he chose you. So Arise 23, it says, Arise, let your light shine. We have done that. We have escalated our prayer. We have escalated um, our worship. Can you imagine? I mean, this year has been amazing in praise and worship. We have preached the truth. We have stuck to uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it's paid off. And I'm telling you, just be encouraged today. And our main theme this year was uh, Arise 23. And I have no doubt that his promise was fulfilled this year. I have no doubt. And, and I, was, I was excited to see that. And as a pastor, I see many in here shining brighter for Jesus, and the light is beaming out of your hearts. Remember we did the breakdown of Oh Holy Night? The, the hearts are aglow. I see that. I see hearts aglow in this church. So we have risen, and I'm so um, excited to look back on 23. And I, I, was just say, I was up here yesterday and just say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this person's life. Thank you for this person's deliverance. Thank you for giving this one hope. And I just, man, I was just speaking life. You got to start speaking life. And as we move forward into 24, there are a lot of unknowns. Can we just be honest? I mean, we, you want to go over it? The economy, world conflict, politics is going to be a monster one this year. And there's plain chaos and sin abounding in general in the world. It, it, there is a heaviness. And I, I'm going to share something with you. When y'all were worshiping, and I was over there, and I was praying in the Holy Spirit that last song, the Lord showed me a dead tidal area. Death. Stagnant. And then all of a sudden, there was a high tide, and it rushed in there. And I could see oxygen coming up and bubbles, and there was a flood. There was an outpouring of living water. And that's what he showed me, and I'm, I'm still going to pray about that. But I think that there is a time when God is fixing to move mightily. And he's going to use a foundation of truth. And my thoughts were, what, what is to come, Lord? And how do we plan and prepare for next year? How do we direct our vision? Um, what is our priorities this year? And what goals um, can we each spiritually set this year? We'll get into that. And how do we lead in the direction of your will? So that's stuff y'all can pray for us about. Because we have to have y'all's prayer. But in, in, my, in my own prayer, the Lord spoke to me. And I got a confirmation uh, also, like I said, with people I trust within our church. And that was so cool, by the way. I'm, I'm so excited about what the Holy Spirit is doing. That the word of the Lord for this upcoming year was truth. 
truth. It has to be the truth. Are y'all with me? And let me show you why. He led me to two scriptures, John 16, 13. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. That is a powerful scripture. When, you're, when I'm preaching, up here preaching the New Year's Eve morning service, that scripture you might want to read. Do you want to know what's to come? You better lay your foundation of truth in your life. That's all I can tell you. And then John 8, 32 was the second one. And this one's simple. Everybody knows this. But they go so hand in hand together that when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. So the spirit of truth is doing God's will. He's going to let us know what we need to do to fulfill God's will. He's going to let us know what is to come. And then the freedom will hit. He speaks only in the Father's will. And I will tell you, uh, and it will tell you what is yet to come. Then the next scripture states that you will know the truth and it will set you free. You live a life of freedom. When you stay in God's word, in his truth, in a solid church that ain't scared to preach, they ain't t- trying to tickle ears. You, you hear me? I mean, you, you can have a fun church and still have a solid foundation of truth. You know, you, you, people think, oh, no, we have, to, we, have to, we have to blend in. No, the Bible tells me we are sanctified, that we are a priesthood, that we are called out to be separate. And the church in whole needs bold, biblical, unashamed preaching, period. Most, uh, though most every church will claim that they preach, I'm not dogging on other churches, I'm telling you the truth today, and that they preach the Bible, that is not necessarily the case all the time. And, and if there is one thing uh, that a church must excel in prioritizing, it is not a building campaign. It is not storytelling. It's not growth strategies. It's not more programs. It is preaching and letting the power of His Word take effect. It's letting His Word take effect. It is, all those other things are followed. Can somebody say amen? Real, biblically saturated, passionate, accurate, counter-cultural. Jesus glorifying preaching. That is the ministry that every other ministry flows out of. Are y'all with me? And it is, it's, it's through the preaching that the stewardship of the gospel of Jesus Christ it is entrusted to the church in Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Why do you think we do an altar call? Every, every Sunday, every time we get up here, we do an event. We give people the chance to accept Jesus Christ. It's the power. It's the power that changes. It's the power that gives, makes them overcomers. All they have to do is believe, but you cannot believe, you cannot give faith if you cannot hear the truth in the Word of God. So you must consistently preach the truth in the Word of God so faith can escalate. Then the truth is faithfully dispensed to a lost and hurting world. I love that. So as we go into next year, we look back and we thank God, don't we? We look back and thank God. Thank God. that Look, Paul even became a teacher this year, dude. Like they, it's crazy the things that God's doing in our in our in our um, in our church, man. It's it, and I'm uh, like I said, I, I'm just so excited. I can't even get words for what He's done this year. And but we look forward and trust in His promises, and we stick to one thing this year: the truth. See, truth is timeless, and I, I'll share you something about truth. Truth does not differ from one age to another. Y'all better listen to me. From one people to another, from a geographical location to another, you see the great all-prevailing truth in the Word of God stands for time and eternity. Let me explain something to you. When we can proclaim the truth out of this church, it stands for eternity. Think about that. So we take it serious. We get our hearts right. We come to church saying we have a purpose and we're going to serve. We come to church knowing that the word, that God has a specific word for each one of us, and then the growth happens. 
And so that's what I want you all to start seeing in 24. And that's the foundation we're just going to keep laying. Point number one. Here we go. Here's the practical ones. Are you ready for me to really start preaching? The fear of God. I'm going to let y'all let that simmer for a second. You see, the fear of God, let me explain that what that is. It's a sense of awe. It's a sense of submission. It's a sense of reverence, thankfulness, trust, and surrendering to Him daily. It's, it's, it's not what people think it is. But there is a true fear of God. You best fear God. And that's what's lacking in our nation. The fear of God. That's why preachers preaching candy sermons, lollipop sermons, and tickling people's ear because there's no fear of God within the local church. And then within the many local churches in the nation, as a church whole in a mainstream church whole in our nation, the fear of God is lacking. And so the Lord said, you preach the fear of God. And if, we were absorbed, uh, if, if we're absorbed, and I'll show you why, if we're absorbed with fearing God, there is no time or energy left in which to fear men. But we're human, right? I get it. So naturally we waver from time to time. All the more reason to be absorbed in fearing God. Psalms 27.1 The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? Pastor Charlie, you preach too hard. I said, well, brother, I can't. Then you're telling me the Holy Ghost is telling me the wrong thing. I'm preaching the biblical truths. It's not that hard. You know, repentance is a beautiful word. If you want to hold on to your sin, it's ugly. But your sin is uglier. See, some preachers fear for their paychecks. But I don't really get paid. So my point is, their church culture is as such that they, they preach to please men. You cannot preach to please men. You have to preach to uh, please God. And in and, and, and the, and the, 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 and, uh, and the Old Testament it says, you must be very careful. The watchman, you will have blood on your hands. So when I preach, I take it for real. I'm coming up here and I'm giving somebody, somebody's going to go home, each person with something to chew on for that week that's going to produce change if they want it. So others avoid words like repent or sin. Well, I don't know. I don't even know how you can make it as a believer if you don't repent. I repent daily, multiple times. Father, forgive me. Before I get up on this stage, wash and cleanse me with your precious blood. Forgive me of my failures. Forgive me of my shortcomings. Take away my iniquities. I lay them down at the foot of the cross this morning because I want to be used as your vessel. So if I've sinned, I ask you to cleanse me with your precious blood from head to toe. Make me white as wool. It's not that hard. It's the beautifulest thing ever because Jesus already did it for you. And so if you don't like repentance, then you're holding on to sin. I'm sorry. Because, and, and because truth is unpopular does not mean it should not be proclaimed. 2 Timothy 3.16 All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequately equipped for every good work. It's all inspired by the Holy Spirit. So if you get mad at Pastor Charlie, then you need to talk to Jesus. <laughs> Ephesians 4.12, it also does this. For the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ. That leads me to the title of my sermon, A Foundation of Truth. See, you can't just come in thinking you're going to have a powerful vision down the road. You cannot come in and just think the first three years that you don't have to lay a foundation. You have to lay a foundation to have any strong building. Because when you lay the foundation that, that, is, that is firm, that when the storm comes it won't get swept away, then freedom builds the rest. Because what? The truth set you free. Is that good teaching? See, churches need to expect their pastors and teachers to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. I know y'all just got up a little, a little bit ago. <laughs> to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. 
That means we give hope to the ones that need it. And the ones that get stagnant and religious, well, we give them hope they can change too. I'll say that again. To comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. A sobering reminder that Jesus himself states. You ready to hear from Jesus this morning? Matthew 10, 27. What I tell you in the darkness, speak in the light. And what you hear whispered in your ear, proclaim above the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and your body in hell. Let me explain something to you. Jesus said, you proclaim it on the housetops. What's done in the darkness will get shown in the light. And you just keep preaching the truth. Don't be fearing all the haters. Don't be fearing somebody is trying to direct you because they're still caught up in sin or self-righteousness or they're religious. Well, guess what? You ain't going to hang that long because the truth is going to eat your lunch. But there's repentance because we all get that way sometimes. Let's just be honest. See, the church needs believers who fear God who are unashamed and unreserved as they boldly enter a lost and dying world and unleash truth through the power of the Holy Spirit. Unleashing the truth. That's what we are going to do in 24, like never before. You're like, oh, he's going to preach even harder in 24. Yes, you got that right. I'm going to do what the Lord told me to do. You see, the church of true believers must be separated from the world. Trying to blend in with a woke mentality and this worldly culture, that's what's wrong with mainstream churches, like I said earlier. It's not who God has called us to be. The truth must be revealed. It must be spoken. It must be lived and projected in the times we are in. That means we must arise and project the truth uh, like never before. And in prayer, I have been sensing the urgency. God said, preach an escalated truth. I don't know what that means, but I'm trying to do it this morning to start the New Year's off. Escalated truth. I said, yes, sir. Proverbs 14, 25. And I'll show you why. A truthful witness saves lives. But the one who utters lies is treacherous. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence, and his children will have refuge. The fear of the Lord is the fountain of life that one may avoid the snares of death. That's pretty amazing. We might ought to pay attention to that. The fear of the Lord is a powerful spiritual principle that will set you free from the opinions and the thoughts of others. It will cause you to walk in confidence in your relationship with God and your ministry to ministering with others. You've got to learn to start ministering to others. Do you? Is there somebody, and somebody raise their hand if they know somebody in here they love that does not know Jesus. Every one of us should raise our hand this morning. That should be a spiritual goal for you, to start interceding for that person. And if you love them, you'll give them Jesus' love. Because if not, we are not called. We are not doing what we're called to do. You, 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 you people worried about offending all the time. Well, guess what? They ain't going to be offended when they're in hell. They're going to be wishing. That if you really loved me, you would have come told me about Jesus. You would have come told me of that redemption. You would have come told me about that saving power. You could have come told me that he took all my sins and past and regrets and I could be a new creation. So if you have not done that, that is one thing in 24. That must be a priority in your life. With knowledge comes wisdom. The Bible reminds the believer that no wisdom comes to us from our own doing. It can only come from God. That's why you fear God. Well, everybody thinks they're so wise. No, He gives you that wisdom is what the Word of God tells me. So that, 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 makes, that makes me uh, realize that I ought to just humble myself. Staying humble. And it, you know what? The enemy, Satan's purpose is to steal the seed of truth from your heart by sending distracting, uh, distracting thoughts. Who has distracting thoughts throughout the week? Sometimes. The enemy comes and tries to distract you. He may even come to you with a false threat. He may come to you uh, with a sin you used to deal with and say, oh, go on and get you son. But the difference between a Christian and non-Christian is this. They both may have good and evil thoughts. But listen. 
Christ gives his followers the strength to select the right way and not the wrong way. The devil has no power unless you give it to him. That's where the fear of God steps in. Knowing the truth gives you the power to overcome. Stay humble. Live according to his word. Y'all ready? Reverence him and worship him. Stay thankful. Hate sin and keep a repentive heart. Ask him for the knowledge. Ask him for an enhanced faith. Set spiritual goals this year and stick to them. Desire what he desires. That is the key. Are you got, got that? Point number two. Oh, and let's, I'm going to say it again. Just stay humble. Just stay humble. And, 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 and this is the last part of, of point number one that I almost skipped over. You need to learn to hate the things God hates and learn to love the things that he loves. Then you'll be all right. Point number two, stay fed. Here's the second application to go into the new year. The bottom line is the church needs scripture. The gospel is the foundation. Learn it, receive it over and over, then learn it again. Learn it so well that your heart overflows from it. Like you got it so good into your heart and spirit that you wake up quoting scripture. Well, pastor, I can't do that. Yes, you can, because you can sing, still sing all the Blink 82 songs from 1992. Like I always said, everybody knows all the George Strait songs from 1982, but yet you can't memorize the scripture. Come on, man. I even make Christina do it about every three weeks. Babe, rattle them off. She gets so mad. Psalm 23. She'll rally us there going, see, it's in your heart. See, no matter, uh, you, you, you have to learn, the, it's staying fed in the word of God in 24, the truth. Cover yourself. Absorb the truth. And no matter how important the financial needs of a church are, no matter what programs the church wants to push and what upcoming events need to be announced, the most important item of business is when the church gathers and not the business of fundraising or convincing people to sign up for events. Let me explain something to you. The first priority is the Father's business in feeding the sheep the Word of God. Period. Many practical things will certainly need to and should happen when we all gather. But nothing is more essential than speaking the truth in the Word of God and then applying it to our lives. That is it. And I was studying, I came across this, John 12, 21. These then came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and began to ask him, saying, I want you to look at this. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Think about that for a minute. You see, the hurting and lost want one thing. They are looking for hope. They are telling us right here in this church, we just want to see Jesus. <clears throat> they just want to see Jesus in our church. They want to see Jesus in our vision. They want to see Jesus in our leadership. They want to see Jesus in our members. They want to see Jesus in each of your hearts. And that is a fact. And that's what's going to change the world. And then this, pay close attention. You must stay fed in the Word of God continually. Check it out. John 8, 31. So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed Him, If you continue in my Word, then you are true disciples of mine. Well, Pastor, I just don't have time to read my Bible. Well, then I don't know what to tell you. I know that Jesus just said, if you love the word, then you are my disciples. You have to cultivate a love for the word of God in 24. I'm going to start the whole Bible plan myself. The one Christina made is good enough for me. I can read four chapters. You can do it a day. That's not that hard. Then the, world will, the word will guide you in everyday life and decisions. Lean, uh, learn it in your heart. And here you go. Here's another one. Y'all be like, oh, man. One solid spiritual goal is to learn five new verses this year by heart. If I were you, I would set the goal a little bigger and say, Lord, I want to learn five passages. Psalm 23, Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. And you can do it. It'll change your life. When you learn that word and get it in your heart, just say, Lord, I want to learn five 
this year in my heart, and when you quote those and meditate on them daily, it will truly change your life. I'm telling you. Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn and I will confirm it, that I will keep your righteous ordinances. Stay fed. Stay fed up on the scriptures. You know why? Because Jesus states he is the substance. He states what he, he, you know what he calls himself? The bread of life. The bread of life. And so John 6, For the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, always give us this bread. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst, because he is the living water. Your full substance in life is based upon getting in the word of God, because it is the bread of life. Throughout the Bible, bread is a symbolic representation of God's life-sustaining provision. And when Jesus told the hungry crowds that he was the bread of life, he was teaching his followers that he alone was their true source of spiritual life. It's so beautiful, both in the present world and in the everlasting life to come. He says, I'm all. I am the substance. What does the Bible say? Give us this day. That In 24, that should be your prayer. And the bread of life is the word. And you can pray in the word. You want to see powerful prayer in your life? You want to see you want to see how prayer changes things? Because the prayer of a righteous person availeth much. You want to see your prayer change things? You pray in the Word, and then you go on and get filled with the Holy Ghost, and then you get out. Then you get on to a real escalation. Truth in His Word sustains you through it all. You know why? Like that song we sang earlier, His promises are yes and amen. They never fail. He says, my promise is in my word. If you find it in my word, it is yes and amen. I love that. The Bible says to seek first his kingdom and all his righteousness, and then all things are added. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and then all things are added. All of his promises are yes and amen. Good preaching. I ain't going to preach that long. I'm going to let y'all make it because it's New Year. I'm only on point number two. <laughs> uh, preach truth because you love them. Preach truth because you love them. I, 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 I found a quote. On the subject of a preacher's and church's love, Martin Lloyd-Jones said, to love, to love to preach is one thing but to love those to whom we preach is quite another. I preach the truth because God called me to love you. God called you into my life, so I'm going to give you the truth. God called each of you into my life, so my number one priority is to make sure you grow. And you can't grow unless you hear the truth. And so the Lord just broke it down so simply. I hope you're getting something. I'm not crazy preaching today. I'm just trying to encourage you to move into 24 with this. See, love is giving people the truth. Love is preaching with a moist eye. Love is seeing them as souls in need of a beautiful Savior. Love is telling it like it is so believers can go strong in Christ. I tell it like it is. I, 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 we don't try to be fancy up in this church. Um, we try to do things excellent. But you know what? The Lord called me to be who I'm supposed to be. You need to understand that if, you, if there's people that you say you love in your life, you just be yourself and then God's going to come use that. Just be a vessel. Don't try to be nobody else. Don't try to come to them all religious and everything. Just come to them and say, let me, let me, let me. I got to tell you what Jesus did in my life. I've been praying for you for five weeks. Now I felt the time and I just want to share what Christ did in my life. I promise you. If you save one soul for eternity, you've done all you needed to do in 24. But I'm praying for massive amounts of souls today, y'all. 1 Timothy 1.5. Paul is talking to his protege, his young one. And, and he's, he's trying to build up his faith. And he says, the aim of our charge is love 
that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. That's what I try to do every Sunday for you. That's the example you should take when you're trying to reach people in the world. Preachers, churches, and believers motivated not by money, not by you want to be somebody that you ain't, not motivated by pragmatic results, but by love are what the church needs today. And I pray that you fulfill your ministry. Each of you has a ministry with a heart of love for God's glory and God's people. If you're a member of Christ's flock, which you are, may you find and flourish this year. I pray that you flourish in Christ's power where you get the strength to rise up and the Holy Ghost is, is just, just eating you up to go minister to people, to invite people to church. When people come in here, you love on them and, 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 and because you might be that denominator, that hope. People say, well, Pastor Jesus is the hope. You talk about hope nonstop. You got hope tattooed on your arm. I said, yeah, because each of us can be that hope. You are somebody's hope in 24. Jesus has to use your feet and hands. You are somebody's hope in 24. Use it. 1 John 4, 8. The ones who does not love does not know God, for God is love. By this the love of God was manifested in us that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through Him. And this is, and this is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. You see, the truth spoken to someone is true love. When I get up here, you ought to see hearts coming out. Don't be hating. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't know how he knew I was doing that this week. I don't know how he knew I was dealing with that all month. I'm going to chew on that a little bit, and I might accept it maybe. No, you ought to see hearts blowing out of this thing. When I preach from that pulpit, you ought to feel love coming out because the truth is Jesus. And I wouldn't preach anything I didn't think that was going to make you a better person, a better believer a more powerful witness, and that would just make your life so much more beautiful. So understand that. You see, the truth spoken for someone is true love. There is no judgment, just the sincere love of Jesus. God sent His Son to take away all the hurt, sin, and the past. He loves each person immensely. You have to see people like that. You have to see people like Christ sees people. You do. And this is where each of us become um, others' hope. Like I just said, we arise and share Jesus, then the truth will set people free. And it boils down to this. Check this out. Understanding the love of Jesus Christ for others, the love of Christians for Christ, and the love of Christians for humanity. We have to look at people and say, man, if I could just talk to that person. How many times have you rejected what the Holy Ghost has told you to do at a store? How many times have you rejected what the Holy Ghost told you when you were pumping gas? I'm telling you some of the best conversations, the best conversions I've ever seen Jesus do is on days when I didn't feel like doing nothing and the Holy Ghost prompted me to go talk to that person and just love on them. That's all you got to do. It might be giving them 20 bucks. It might be just saying, hey, man, you need a hug, bro. People look at me crazy because there's no telling what I'll do. If the Holy Ghost push, pushes me to do it, I'm going to do it. You remember the story a couple months ago when I was getting the phone calls and just meeting these men that needed help? And they were huge. like They were all big, tall black men, like seven feet. I have the pictures. It's crazy. But it was like there was, a, there was like a minute there where the Lord was just using me, and these guys needed hope. They were fresh out of jail trying to build their life. They didn't have no money to get to the next town to get to their family. And the Lord just used me immensely. I just stopped what I'm doing. I ended up giving them money, ended up giving them a hug, ended up preaching them to Jesus. And all they wanted to do was somebody to love and listen to where they were at, and they needed the hope that followed it. Be open this year to that. Don't just walk past people. Because let me explain something to you. There was a beggar one time. And they saw him for years. 
And when the Holy Ghost finally hit and Pentecost hit, the disciples walked by and they finally noticed it. He said, silver and gold have I none. But I'm going to give you Jesus, boy, so rise up and walk. You see, there are people that are laid down and hurt right now. There are people that are afflicted that can't get up from drugs and oppression. And you can be the one that walks up and say, maybe silver and gold I can't give you today, but this is what I can tell you to do. I'm going to give you Jesus, so rise up and walk. And the Lord told Moses this, Exodus 34, 6, Then the Lord passed by in front of him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. And what is the last word of that scripture? You know why? You see the word this scripture ends with is truth. Because guess what? The compassion, grace, and his love always are secured by the truth. Isn't that good teaching? Might want to write that one down. John 8, 32, back to one of the original verses that the Lord gave me this week. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You see, freedom from sin, hang-ups, hurts, and uncertain future is the truth in God's Word. Those promises will set you free. When you read, when you read in uh, Jeremiah, I have plans for you. I have plans not of bad or calamity. I have plans of a future and a hope for your life. You believe that. It's a beautiful thing. You truly believe it in 24. This is a quote that I actually came up from. Uh, I didn't even Google and, and steal this one. I'll be slipping Billy Graham on all, all kind of stuff. A foundation of truth sets up a structure of freedom. I'm going to say it again. A foundation of truth sets up a structure of freedom. That's what he's doing in each of our lives, and that's what he's doing at this church. My prayer is that he prepares us for what we've been praying for. I'm going to say that again too. My prayer for 24 is that today he prepares us for what we have been praying for. And in closing today, the truth can be broken down in so many ways. The Bible is full of truth. But in prayer and preparing for 24, this is what God put on my heart strongly. And the fear of God is lacking in the church and whole. Stay fed up on His Word. Learn to understand that truth is hard at times, but that truth is the outpouring of God's love, and that is what sets the captives free. When there is something that is preached, and the Word of God kind of it eats at you, listen. Whom the Father love, He corrects. A good father corrects. Son, don't touch that stove. You're going to get burnt. Whatever. Do not touch that stove because you're going to get burnt and it's going to hurt you. Okay. Psst. Or... He could have saved him from a third degree burn and got really truthful with him and say, if you touch that stove, I'm going to whoop your butt. Now do you get how much I love you? Because when my daddy spanked me, he put me on his lap and we did a mini song <laughs> of how much a father's love is pouring out of him. And to me at the time, that did not feel like love. Because I shot a kid with a BB gun one time and I had bruises, three of them, lashes, and I could not sit down. And I've never aimed a gun at a person again. And I've always saved with a gun. And he said, finally, you learned your lesson, didn't you? Because I love you. Because you don't ever want to make that mistake in life. And so whom the Father loves, he chastens. That means he corrects. And so when you hear the truth, just think on it a minute. Ask the Holy Ghost to help you with it. Don't get offended. Say, Lord, I accept it, and I want to change. Everybody said what? Amen. Lastly, learning to accomplish and soak in all these things, we must learn to listen, be directed, and follow through in what the Holy Spirit is speaking in our lives. 
Did you catch that? We have to follow through with what the Holy Spirit is saying. Billy Graham stated this, The Holy Spirit can take God's word of truth and minister it to our deepest needs. Usually when you're in need, the Holy Ghost will speak to you. Seriously. you got to learn to listen to it. Or when somebody's need is deep, you need to learn to listen to that. And so that's what I'm praying for you, that you start being still, that you start listening to that uh, small, uh, still small voice more in 24. Can somebody say amen? amen? John 16, 13. But then he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, he will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. I'm extremely excited about what God is doing and, and will do within this church and each of our lives this upcoming year. I am so very excited. The hurting and lost want one thing as we search for, uh, as they search for true hope. You know what it is? We wish to see Jesus. That's it. We must des be desiring this in our own life too. And the foundation of truth in a believer's life is the sustaining force that will keep them on fire for Jesus and growing in His grace. You have to build a foundation of truth. That's why it's imperative that you start reading the Bible. Start the Bible reading plan. Come to Bible studies because we're going to have multiple Bible studies this year. Come and grow. Come kick it with your church fam. That is the church fam is like the coolest non-judgmental people that we that you know. Why would you not come kick it with that? There's a lot of crowds that just aren't fun. Our church fam is fun though. And nobody judging you. Look, man, we're here to pray for you and love you and let you work through it. But we're going we're going to preach the truth though so you can get through it. And listen, I'm going to make it real simple right here. We had some good application this morning. Just put God first in 2024 and let Him bless you. Put Him first. Make church a priority. Tithe. Spend time in prayer. Spend time in word. Spend time in praying for those that the Lord wants you to minister to. And make sure your family is following Christ. Then He'll bless you. Because see, most of the problems we see in our lives is when we put God last. You must put Him first. Seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and then all things will be added. 1 John 3, 8, dear children. And I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up. All these scriptures, um, and I want to wrap the importance of truth in, and I'm done. I went a little over, I'm sorry. I'll wrap these up. 1 John 3, 8, dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. 1 John our third John 1 4. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. That might be the most powerful one he gave me this week. You want to make Jesus happy? Walk in his truth. Ephesians 4 15. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. 2 Timothy 2.15 Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. A worker who does not need to be ashamed and listen to this who correctly handles the word of truth. The truth of God's word also holds sanctifying power for each of you. The Lord underscores the importance of truth and I'll tell you why. That means he writes a line under it. Paul is describing the full armor of God in Ephesians 6. We won't get into that this time, but we're going to get there pretty quick. The truth, by presenting us with the belt of truth as the first piece of spiritual armor. Why was the belt of truth the first piece of the spiritual armor? Think. Because guess what? The other armor is important too, right? The rest of our armor is held secure when the truth is wrapped around us. Otherwise, we are defenseless against the lies of our adversary, the devil, who is the father of lies. If you keep yourself wrapped in the truth, then the father of lies can't touch you. And as I kept studying, I came across this. 
Jesus was praying what is called the high priestly prayer. It quite, it's so powerful. This is what Jesus prays over each of us. You remember how he always preaches at the right hand on majesty interceding for you? Listen to this, John 17, 13. This is where I want you to be encouraged. Is everybody encouraged this morning? Yeah. I want you to not look back at 23. If you went through it, you thank him for the growth. But then you look back and you reflect on the miracles. This is what Jesus is saying in John 17, 13. But now I come to you. He's praying to the Father. And these things I speak in the world so that they may have my joy made full in themselves. You better be encouraged. Put this in your heart this morning. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world but to keep them from the evil one. They are not of this world even as I am not of this world. Listen, here you go. Sanctify them in the truth because your word is truth. As you sent me to the world, I have also sent them into the world. And for the sake, I sanctify myself that they themselves also be sanctified or changed by the truth. That's what Jesus prays for you. I think we'll listen to Jesus and go with Truth 24 this year. Give Jesus a hand. <laughs> and I personally ask the Lord as a leader to strengthen myself, to strengthen me, Lord. Enhance my faith. Give Christina a fresh strength. But I intercede for each of you like I was yesterday. So this upcoming year, I ask that He strengthen you, that He strengthened you with a fresh power you've never had, with an with a overflow of joy and peace and the light of glow that comes out of your heart. And I'm saying this by the word of God this morning. I'm believing for the most powerful year that we have seen yet. For souls to find Him truly. For miracles to continue and to multiply. For supernatural supply. Not just financial supply. Oh, we thank Jesus that we can do all that. I'm praying in your life a supernatural supply of the power of the Holy Ghost for each believer that you truly find your purpose because I know that you are His masterpiece and masterpieces have a purpose. I'll skip down and not wear you out because we went a little over. I'll skip down to the last verse of Jesus' prayer to the Father. He said, John 17, 26, And I have made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you love me may be in them, and I in them. I want you to be encouraged. Whatever you go through in 24, that's what Jesus is praying for you. You can't be defeated by anything unless you let yourself. Let's just end with Jesus' words. That wraps up that message pretty perfectly, don't it? You see, the truth is love. And that's why we keep building on that firm foundation. So we look back at 23 and we're thankful, right? But we look forward and forward, full trust. And the Lord told me to tell you this morning, you rest in my truth. Because my promises are yes and amen. I want to pray this prayer over you. We don't have any visitors today. Everybody here been saved? Everybody here been saved? Okay, we're going to do that for the online viewers, but I want to pray a prayer before I get to the altar call. Are y'all ready for me to pray over you? I just spoke words over your life. I spoke life to you the entire message today. I'm going to keep speaking life into you. I'm going to keep speaking the living water I'm going to expect, expect you to get into the stay fed in the word, develop a fear of God this year that is a reverence, and just stick to the game plan. And I'm so excited, but I, I, I want to pray this prayer for you to start the new year. Uh, number 624. Everybody bow their heads. This is a prayer <clears throat> that leaders would pray over the congregation. 
And there's not anybody else I love as much as each of y'all. So when I pray this, I'm not praying a token prayer. I'm, I'm believing this year. This is the prayer that, that God will do for, do for you. Are y'all ready? The Lord bless him. I ask you for supernatural supply. I ask you that you keep them. That none be sifted. That none be sifted. That no weapon formed against any of us shall prosper. That the Lord shines His face upon you. I pray that you get a new revelation of who Jesus really is in your life this year. I pray for an enhanced power as you seek His face. And then it says, and be gracious to you. I pray for an enhanced mercy and grace upon your life too. I pray that Jesus' grace floods you this year. That where sin abounds, that grace abounds even more. And then in verse 26, the Lord lift up His countenance on you and give you peace. That means I pray for uh, enhanced anointing upon your life, the presence of the Lord, that His countenance shines on you and you glow from His countenance this year. And then lastly, that He gives you a supernatural peace, a peace that this world cannot give you. Whatever you're going through today, the Lord says, I've got you. I'll never leave nor forsake you. You have nothing to worry about. And that is what I pray. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Keep your heads bowed. Yeah, you give Jesus a hand. That was amazing. And like we always do, we bow our heads. If anybody here needs Jesus, I think we're all good today as fam. But if you really need Jesus, raise your hand for the online viewers. We want to give you an opportunity to start your new year fresh. Start your new year with a new life. If you need this hope, we're preaching. Jesus Christ is the answer. We found it. It's the void that fills your life up. It all starts with Jesus. The Bible tells us in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, come on somebody, and the life that no one comes to the Father except through me. You must accept Jesus in your heart first and simply believe what he did for you on the cross. Simply believe that he rose again. For you, because he loves you that much. And so, let's all say a prayer. Y'all, y'all, for the people that want to accept Christ, let's all say a prayer and we'll say it together. Y'all repeat after me. Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I'm in need of you. I know you died on the cross. That you rose on the third day. That you prepared a way. Just for me. I would like to experience your love and mercy in my life. I ask you today, right now, to come into my heart and truly change me. Forgive me of my sins, Jesus. Wash and cleanse me with your precious blood. Make me white as snow white as wool make me a new creation fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit I thank you for loving me and giving me new hope in you in Jesus name Amen give the Lord a hand thank y'all for letting me go thank y'all for being here with us I'm just praying that I meant that prayer. I meant that prayer. I know God's going to do miraculous things. Marvelous things are coming this year. There's going to be a fresh power coming, and I am so excited to see what God is doing in each of your lives and the ones that are coming. And I, I thank you for being with us today, but I do want to encourage you next Sunday, let's start the prayer project. We have handouts. You might want to get that handout today so you can start looking it over. It gives you a week to look over the handout. Uh, Ms. Vicki will be at the connect table and she'll hand you one out. And uh, once again, I just want to pray over you and uh, be safe tonight. If you ain't got to go out, just chill at home, right?
Father, we thank you for these beautiful people. We thank you for uh, the past year. We thank you, Lord, for all the miracles, for all the souls. We thank you, Lord, for every uh, growth that you have done supernaturally, Lord. We thank you that you supplied all of our needs. We thank you for all the ministries and people we were able to bless. And I just am so grateful today that we look back and say, thank you, Jesus. But we look forward now with Truth 24, and we're trusting in you fully this year, Lord. We're trusting that you come and meet us. We're trusting that your power spreads throughout the hill country like never before. We thank you, Lord, for a fresh power in this house, a fresh that this house stands out like a lighthouse in the storm, Lord. And we thank you, Jesus. We thank you so much for what you have prepared for us in 24. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. I love you guys.